One of the biggest talking points about the good old Arsenal update that has since come and gone was the changes made to the Vanu Sovereignty Directive weaponry in-game. Let's be honest, the VS Directive weapons, the Beetlejuice more specifically, have been talking points long before this patch in question hit the game. But I digress. The point is, changes were made, and I feel like we have to answer the question. Did the VS Directive weapons deserve to be hit that hard? G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today, we're going to be talking about the VS Directive weapons and whether or not they are now below the curve of performance. So right before we get into the changes themselves and my thoughts on them, I want to set something straight here because people who have been around on this channel for a while might remember that we had a little discussion about directive weapons a couple of years ago now. The scope of that conversation really focused on the quote unquote worthiness of directive weapons when compared against the monumental task of unlocking them. Now that conversation occurred over a video discussing directive weapons as a whole and then we target the Beetlejuice a bit more directly as a case study with a review using it as a means to illustrate the variation in worthiness that exists between directive weapons out there. We then also looked at the Beetlejuice critically to work out if the weapon was overperforming and was overpowered in any sense. The TLDR of those videos was that I considered the Beetlejuice to be overpowered due not to the merit of the actual weapon itself, because well let's be real, the T9 Carve, Anchor, MSWR, Gossor, these are all weapons that this thing is on a very level playing field with as far as raw 1v1 performance is concerned, but the nature of the heat mechanic is what allowed this weapon to do things that other weapons could not do as far as standing uptime was concerned, at least that was my conclusion at the time. My argument for this was that if you, say, loaded half of your Beetlejuice quote-unquote magazine into a couple of enemies and then took the opportunity to swap weapons, get a kill, take a med kit, whatever the case may be, you would have a free reload on your hands thanks to the heat mechanic and would therefore not need to actually take any actual downtime into consideration while you were playing the game. And looking at this retrospectively, when you look exclusively within the context of the quote-unquote meta 50 round LMGs in the game, like the MSWR and the Anchor for other factions, that quote-unquote exclusive advantage to the Beetlejuice kind of still applies even to this day post the changes that it was hit with a couple of months ago. What I really forgot to consider in the moment in time was that, well, when you look at other options like, say, the T9 Carve, the Butcher, the EM6, the Gossaw, all of these weapons, they all sport much much larger effective uptimes over the Beetlejuice due to their higher end magazine size. I can score as many kills with a Gossaw as I can with the Beetlejuice, take a med kit, hit a max suit with the Decimator, or whip out a Commissioner to quickly one-tap a cheeky Infiltrator, and still get my primary weapon back out with more than enough in the tank to score more kills with said Gossaw. However, beyond that, Certain additions or balancing decisions that have been made within the game, either prior to or within the Arsenal update, have changed my stance on the VS Heat mechanic due to the precedent that these changes have set. I just want to make that clear before anyone calls me out for making conflicting comments to the ones I made a few years ago. Opinions do change over time, and mine have slightly. Anyway, let's use this as an opportunity to build some context as to what exactly changed with these weapons, and we'll go from there. In the Arsenal update, Date, the VS Directive weapons were given a new cross-the-board formula that would dictate how their heat mechanic would operate and how it would impact their quote-unquote effective magazine size before being forced to go through a reload. Across the board, all heat mechanic weapons were given a 20% magazine size reduction against their default counterparts. Overheat penalties were now equivalent to the base weapon's long reload time for consistency's sake. The heat recovery delay was now based on your damage per magazine with the formula of damage per mag times times 0.0001 equaling your heat recovery in seconds and the heat bleed off rate was now based on 80% of the reload speed of the long reload for the weapon or the new consistent reload speed that the weapon had should you decide to manually reload it or go through the overheat penalty. This now meant that the VS Directive weapons had slashed magazine size with the Scorpius in particular sitting at a whopping 20 round magazine size and their ability to quote unquote chain their engagements was now based around how long their reload time was. The Beetlejuice in particular felt pretty slashed as well, becoming the only light machine gun in the game to sport a 40 round magazine size whilst still having to deal with a 3.444 second reload time if you were to overheat the weapon or felt the need to manually reload it. 
Now, to give some context here as to how brutal that actually is, the T1 Cycler, which is a Terran Republic assault rifle, sports the exact same potency as far as damage profile is concerned, and it also has an identical magazine size to what the Beetlejuice had received post Arsenal update, had a short reload time of 2.755 seconds. Now, of course, the Beetlejuice still had the heat mechanic that allowed for it to cool down prior to needing to force a reload, but the Heavy Assault is a class that is designed to be the brute at the front of a force, which often sees you engaging multiple foes quickly. So subsequently, the Beetlejuice felt like it was really hard done by in the way of its ability to achieve its role, and I think a lot of VS players had a good reason for feeling a little bit upset by that. Now, the feedback was heard and amendments were made in a follow-up patch that changed the magazine hit that the VS Directive weapons took from 20% to 10%, with the Dark Star and the Eclipse, for example, now sporting a 27-round magazine as opposed to a 24-round magazine. The Beetlejuice also now runs an effective magazine size of 45 rounds, which still makes it the smallest magazine size in the LMG world, but those extra five rounds make it just that little bit less harsh. Obviously, the big thorn in a lot of people's backsides still is the fact that the VS Directive weapons can recharge over time, even when not in your hand. That was once where I stood as well. I've been using the Eclipse and the Beetlejuice in preparation for this video to get some thoughts on where they sit, and at the same time, playing with other factions as a means of getting some perspective of whether or not I really thought I was performing better by comparison with the Beetlejuice as to my weaponry or my other factions. And look, there is no denying that in situations where you can control the fights and the pace in which you get into them, the heat mechanic is your best friend. In fact, it's the best friend of any player who is decent at controlling the pace of their engagements. Through management, you never have to reload, and it makes them really solid farming machines if you know how to pace set engagements. However, if we look at some of the stuff that has been added to the game recently, or some of the changes we have seen to other weaponry that impact effective uptimes and the ability to mitigate downtime if you control the pace of engagements, I think you'll find that the heat mechanic's capabilities aren't really exclusive to the heat mechanic itself anymore. Allow me to explain. For one, we have the Scavenger Implant, which, for those who don't know, lets you restock 30% of your weapon's magazine directly back into said magazine without the need to reload. So, for example, on your 50 round equivalent LMGs to the Beetlejuice like the MSWR and the Anchor, you get 15 rounds back if you score that kill with those weapon categories. Ramp that up to a Gossaw or a T9 Carve, and you're looking at a 30 round return. If you have the Butcher with the extended magazine attachments, then you're looking at a 90 round return on a sidearm kill. The point I'm making is that if you really care about the heat mechanic on the VS, you have the means to replicate its effects to some extent with meta weapons on the heavy assault should you wish to do so. If you really want to get down to the numbers here, because this is something that I was genuinely curious about, the Beetlejuice seems to cool itself down in approximately 3.9-ish seconds when you let off the trigger as close to an overheat as possible. Now, this was something that I admittedly hand-timed in the VR training room, so there's going to be a bit of leeway and inconsistency on that figure, but generally speaking, around, I'd say, 3.7-ish to 3.9-ish seconds is how long it takes the Beetlejuice to cool down if you get to 44 rounds in the effective magazine and then let off the trigger. The point being, it takes you 450 milliseconds by comparison to whip out a commissioner, and with a perfect headshot accuracy then takes you 0.36 seconds or 360 milliseconds to score a kill, which is the optimal time to kill of headshots with the commissioner. So in a pinch, you can realistically do some pretty wacky stuff with this implant on other factions and still achieve a relatively similar effect if you're skilled enough to what you would be able to do with the passive effect of the Beetlejuice. Now obviously, even under a perfect world environment where you're cracked out of your mind and score all of these kills between your sidearm and your primary weapon in the perfect order to maximize your uptime with the anchor or the MSWR, you're eventually going to be forced to take on board a reload. Now, with the Beetlejuice, that's not exactly the case. However, the MSWR sports a 3.045 second short reload time, and as we said before, the Beetlejuice on the cusp of overheating will take 3.9-ish seconds to cool down from start to finish. So in actuality, the Beetle still requires the user to take a longer period of downtime to get themselves back down to net zero, unless they choose to engage a force reload, which, hey, makes the Beetle just about as same as any other weapon out there as far as effective uptime is concerned when compared to other faction options. Just worth highlighting there, I think. 
Another thing that has happened recently is the addition of something that we mentioned just a second ago, the Butcher and its new extended magazine attachment. You can effectively rock a 300 round LMG via the Butcher now. Man oh man, if you ever felt like the Beetlejuice had way too much uptime to roll with, wait till you get a load of this thing. The amount of players who will realistically burn through an entire mag of this weapon while actively trying to kill other players in one-on-one -on -one fights and not just shooting at a doorway for the sake of quote-unquote suppression is incredibly low. The point I'm making here is that the realistic uptime of the Beetlejuice is now matched or outdone by other weapons out there. The precedent has been set in the very update that the Beetlejuice got nerfed in that having what is essentially an unlimited uptime is okay for other weapons and yet the Beetlejuice was nerfed accordingly as a result. And for the sake of consistency, I have to say that it strikes me as less of a problem nowadays that the Beetlejuice gets this passive benefit when it is attached to a weapon that is by all means not overpowered in its function. I mean, let's just make sure that this is understood here as well. The Varnu Sovereignty weapons get this sort of, I guess, placebo effect of being the most accurate in the game. Like, Varnu weapons are designed to be accurate and therefore a lot of people consider the Varnu to be easy mode because, well, accurate weapons means easy to handle. Let's remember one thing. The Beetlejuice was the only quote-unquote meta 50 round mag LMG in the game that did not receive the ability to mount a compensator. The anchor and the MSWR both got compensators and as a result they're pretty much laser beams to operate now. And that's not to say that the Beetlejuice is necessarily a hard weapon to operate as far as I'm concerned, but look it's just clear that those weapons now do have the ability to become a little bit more laser beamish than what the Beetlejuice can under the new attachment options. Once again, just worth highlighting. I know that another complaint people will take with the VS Directive weapons is that their heat mechanic offers them an unlimited ammunition effect and thus they are less tied down by engineers in their ammo packs. I don't mean to throw unnecessary shade here, but I've just got to say it anyway. The majority of players who are going to be picking up these directive weapons aren't going to live long enough to fire enough rounds that would end up being the equivalent to that of the default weapon's full ammo pool. Also, engineers are everywhere. It's hard to find a situation where ammo isn't readily available. I guess at the end of the day, guys, is what I'm trying to say is that Overall, yes, the heat mechanic has been under a ton of scrutiny since it came out with the directive weapon launch a long, long time ago. But as the game has continued to see balance changes and additions, the heat mechanic to me is less of a problem now. Now, yes, it is the only mechanic that allows weapons to passively regenerate their ammo over time without needing to complete a bunch of active steps to achieve the same outcome thus being scavenger and needing to get sidearm or knife kills to achieve the same effect that, say, a heat mechanic does. But with this new 10% flat magazine size reduction that now is applied to VS weaponry, as well as the rest of the, you know, statistics and balance changes that have been made to heat mechanic as a whole, I don't necessarily think that the VS directive weapons are in such a bad state at the moment. Now, mind you, I only have experience with the Eclipse and with the Beetlejuice. They seem to be in a relatively healthy state, all things considered. The Beetlejuice has often been attributed as being this big old boogeyman by myself included once upon a time. But after using it now and then going back and using other weapons that are in the game as well, I don't necessarily feel like the Beetlejuice has given me more opportunities to perform better than what I would have done with other weapons out there. In fact, it just feels like another LMG that just gives me a little bit more flexibility as far as ammo handling is concerned. With a Goss Saw, with a Butcher, with a T9 Carve, anything that's large capacity or hell, even your 50 round capacity. LMGs, I still feel like I can achieve pretty similar results, all things considered. And guys, with all that said, that is going to wrap up today's video talking about the VS Directive weapons and their changes. At this stage, I don't necessarily think they're in the worst place in the world. The new attachments have certainly helped to breathe some light back into them. And despite that, my assessment at this given point in time is that the heat mechanic ain't as bad as many people seem to make it out to be, especially with some of the options that other factions have access to as well just worth highlighting. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to backhand the like button. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new here, consider backhanding that subscribe button whilst you're at it, guys. Also goes a long way in helping us out and it keeps you up to date with whenever we go live right here on YouTube or whenever we release a brand new video. If you want to support the channel further, consider a channel membership. It goes a long way as well. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.